Hey, good afternoon, George Elliott Coyotes. How are you doing today? All right, I, I have a quick question for you. How many of you do not know who I am? I, okay, good. That's why uh, Mr. Bischoff uh, thought it would be good to uh, do an introduction today. My name is Richard Doche. I'm the new Aboriginal advocate here at George Elliott. I used to be an owl because I was a KSS for 14 years, but this year I decided to become a coyote. And I'm really glad I did it, and I love the school. I love getting to know some of you kids. And today we have something really special. And I'm telling you something further about myself real quick, is uh, my Aboriginal name is Bishak Miangan, and that is Ojibwe, and it means uh, lone wolf or one wolf. And you're gonna meet some really uh, interesting people today. One of them I want to introduce right now, her name is Marlene Swaggen. Marlene works in our school district as a language instructor. Uh, she's from the Okanagan Nation. And uh, I got some notes here. I should actually read them a little bit. Marlene, I've known her for years. She does a lot of drum teachings in our district, uh, traditional uh, stick games and traditional games, as well as she instructs the Okanagan language at Glen Rose uh, uh, Elementary School. So let's give a nice county welcome to Marlene. So did anybody understand what I said? No. Somebody? <laughs> what I said was hello, good day. And I welcomed you to our territory because this school sits on the territory of the Okanagan people. So on behalf of Chief Byron Lewis from the Okanagan Indian Band, and on behalf of Chief um, Rob Louie from the West Bank First Nation, I welcome you to our territory. And uh, what I said also was my Okanagan name and my English name, and I do Okanagan language and culture for School District 23. The song that I'm going to be singing for you is called the Okanagan Song. It's considered our national anthem. Our elders gave it to us to sing for um, our people. And usually what we do is we have four, four um, uh, verses. And that represents the four seasons, the four directions, the four colors of man, yellow, white, black, and red. And all of those people are always recognized in our ceremonies throughout Indigenous country and even in other parts of the world. And I just want to let you know, um, and then there's words in the song. So the words of the song, um, we'll be explaining that to you right at, on the very last verse. And this is considered our national anthem. So. Um, Usually what happens is that we ask you to stand, but we have another cultural presenter that also is here, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, good day everybody. My name is Cloudy Kambasket. I am Splatson First Nation of the Shushwak Territory. The song we are going to sing for you is the Okanagan, Okanagan song, also known as the Okanagan Anthem. We sing the song four times through to represent the four seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer, the four directions, north, east, south, and west, and the four colors in red and smell, which is black, white, red, and yellow. Uh, for this song, I'm going to ask everybody to please stand up. We just came from another booking, so uh, I don't know how those how those music people do it. So we're just coming in from uh, way down in uh, Kelowna at the Kelowna Museum. So we're really lucky that we can go out and do these cultural presentations to all of the schools. And so we try to make it fun and interesting. And so here we go.
He's a world champion hoop dancer. In fact, three times he's been uh, when he has won the world championship hoop dancing competition. That's pretty incredible. He's originally a Cree from the uh, Alexander uh, First Nation, northwest of uh, Edmonton, Alberta. He also is a um, let's see here. He danced with between 13 to 30 different hoops. They look like hula hoops, and uh, you'll be amazed. Uh, depending on the dance that he's doing, depends on the number of hoops, and he'll take time to explain what they all mean as he depicts the medicine wheel and tells stories about the uh, circle of life. Now, as well as being a dancer, uh, Dallas is a talented musician, and he's a traditional flute player, and I'm hoping he's going to play his flute for you today. It'll be a real blessing. And he was a finalist a few years back in a national singing competition called Aboriginal Icon out of Winnipeg, 
and uh, that's pretty cool. And so, um, why don't we uh, give a real good coyote welcome to Mr. Dallas Arcand. Thank you, coyotes. Right on, I heard some howls out there. All right on, ow! Right on, a part coyote too, eh? Mostly res dog. <laughs> All right, well good day. Really happy to be here. My name is Dallas Arcan, and I'm here today to uh, share with you some of the uh, some of the concepts uh, surrounding our Aboriginal culture and a little bit about our history. First and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge that beautiful Okanagan song. Uh, that is the, the anthem of this territory and every time I come into the Okanagan I hear that song in the back of my mind and when the wind just blows just right I can, I can kind of hear it too. You know, it's, uh, that's the way it works for indigenous people. If the, if the land could sing, those are the songs that are inspired to us that we sing. They're inspired to us by the land, by our culture, by our experience that we have here in Mother Earth and we sing in the four directions always to acknowledge everything that exists in Mother Earth. So um, what I brought here today is my own version of that same type of song and uh, this is just a different style of playing an honor song and uh, what I have here is one of our traditional instruments known as the uh, wooden flute or some people call it the cedar flute uh, or the uh, the native flute, but uh, it's very different from, from any other flute out there. And I, and I believe every culture has their own version of the flute. So for example, in classical music, like the more European flute would be the steel flute that you play in the side and you blow into it and uh, you play it with classical music and all that stuff. And uh, then we have the, uh, the pan flute, which is a South American indigenous flute. Uh, I'm sure you guys know what that is. And, uh, and sometimes in schools they have those little plastic flutes, eh? So it's, this one's just a little bit different. This one's actually a double barrel flute. So this is like my double, double barrel shotgun of flutes. So it's pretty awesome. And it's made of ironwood. So it's the most solid flute you can have. And, um, and it's very interesting because uh, this is actually uh, got two chambers. Uh, this one's uh, the drone chamber and this is the melody chamber. And um, what's most interesting about our flutes is that they can mimic or imitate any songbird of the world. And uh, just one last most uh, educational interesting thing I thought I would share about our flutes is that they're based on the pentatonic scale. So if you know the pentatonic scale, it's the same scale that you used to play the blues on and many other musical genres, but mostly the blues. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna play my own version of an honor song, just to honor this beautiful Okanagan territory that we are all blessed to be in today. And uh, this is the Mother Earth song. <laughs> you to another one of our traditional instruments known as the uh, the hand drum. 
Now, in our Cree culture, the hand drum is used for many different purposes. Uh, some use it in ceremonies, where we sing only ceremonial songs, and uh, for different ceremonies, whether it's a sweat lodge ceremony, or a sun dance ceremony, or a pipe ceremony. Uh, we have many different ceremonies. We have a very ceremonial lifestyle, if uh, I like to say it. Um, but um, the ultimate uh, main purpose of, uh, of the hand drum is, is respect uh, because we call this the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Some believe that uh, if our drums ever stop beating, that the earth will stop turning. That's what some of our elders believe. Uh, drums is what kind of makes the world goes around because every culture around the world has their own drum to beat. And so all together we keep the beat of the world to the beat of the drum if uh, that makes any sense. Now, um, the other purpose of these drums is we use them at round dances. Right now it's round dance season where I come from. I come from the Kaputagao Cree Nation. Kaputagao means uh, in the valley. So if you ever come to my reserve, Alexander, um, you have to go over a big hill to get in it. And uh, we're just outside of Edmonton and uh, our territory is known as the Treaty 6 territory. So it's uh, mostly Cree, and uh, there's a mixture of Cree and uh, some Dene in there as well. And uh, as well, we got Métis people in Alberta that are uh, very much part of our community as well. Now, uh, how the numbered treaties work is uh, all across Canada, we have a numbered treaty system. Now that's where the government, back in the 1800s, in the 1700s, made an agreement, made agreements with our ancestors to occupy and share this land. And my people, the Cree people, were known as the, the middlemen of the fur trade. We were the ones that introduced all the early Europeans, all of the European ancestors into the land and other tribes. So that's kind of like a little brief history on um, our First Nations history and culture and diversity. Now, um, I'm, um, I'm a mixed um, breed myself. I'm not full Cree. I'm a mixture of other things as well. So um, I, I, I would like to share a word with you in Cree, and it's a really important word, and it's simply just hello. So uh, in Cree, we just say tanse. Can you guys say tanse? Oh. All right, awesome. Now you know how to say hello in the Cree language. So anytime you come to Edmonton area, you just say tanse. And um, Edmonton, the word Edmonton is actually an indigenous word. Just so you know, FYI, it's a word in Blackfoot, which are neighbors to the south. Uh, and in Blackfoot, it means meeting place. And traditionally, Edmonton was a meeting place for our tribes to meet with the fur traders and such. Now, to the south of us, we have the Blackfoot people in Calgary area. That's known as the Treaty 7 territory. And how they say hello is very different from the way we say hello because they're different languages, different cultures, but we're both indigenous. So the Blackfoots, they say uki. Can you guys say uki? All right, now you have to know how to say hello in Blackfoot. Now, do you remember how to say hello in Cree? Tanse, awesome. Now, most importantly, since we're in the Okanagan, I'm gonna teach you one more word, and that's how to say hello in Okanagan. I'm sure you guys have heard it before, but I'll say it again. Why? Can you guys say white? white. All right. It's like saying white but without the T. So just say white. white. All right. Awesome. Now you know how to say hello to Marlene and Cloudy. Even Marlene and Cloudy, there's a little bit of a cultural difference because Cloudy is a Shushwap and Marlene is an Okanagan. So there's there's many cultural differences. Just right here in the stage, we have three different cultures representing here. Uh, and not to disclude the Métis because I, I guess I can claim a Métis as well because I'm a mixed blood myself. So um, I would like to share another song with you. I mentioned that it is round dance season. Um, so I'm going to share a round dance song with you. This is one of our traditional songs and the beat kind of goes like this. You hit it twice like that and then you use your nails to sort of make that little uh, sound on the on the height of the drum. This is a buffalo hide drum by the way. Just so we're in, just thought we're in school, I'll be as informational as possible. <laughs> I'll make it as educational as possible. Um, but anyways, uh, that's how we make the round dance sound like that. And you 
you gotta time it just right so you get the rhythm right. Anyways, it's round dance season where I come from, and, and if you don't know what a round dance is, it's where 12 guys like myself hold a drum and they make a circle in the middle, and uh, on the outside of the circle, the entire community and the guests of the community, maybe five, six hundred people gather around and uh, and uh, it's a celebration, it takes a whole evening. It starts about 9 o'clock and it ends about 5 o'clock in the morning. So it goes for a very long time. And round dances only really happen in the winter time. And they happen all over Western Canada, all over Cree territory. Like even in British Columbia, there's round dances. And Alberta, Saskatchewan, and into Manitoba, we have round dances. So if you're not familiar with them, and if you ever hear of one, by all means go check one out because you're, you're more than welcome. Because it's an authentic Canadian celebration that you're more than welcome to experience at any time that you ever hear of one. And come to our round dance in Alexander. I personally invite all of you to come check it out. Now, how a round dance works is the singers, they sing their song, and uh, whoever from the audience wants to dance, they make a circle and they join hands and they dance. Uh, actually, can I have some volunteers? You guys want to come and try round dance? Okay, come up here, all you with your hands up. Okay, we're gonna have your advocate show you guys how to do a round dance while I sing this song. So come on up here, join hands and make a circle. So we only need a few, maybe. 10, 20, 30, well, no, not everybody though. But those of you that want to, come on up. And we're gonna make a big circle. So everybody make a circle and join hands. All right. So the first thing you do is you feel the beat in your body like this. And you go to the beat. And then the next thing you do is you, you make your hands go to the beat. And even your head. And then the last thing you do to make the round dance work is everybody steps to the left. And you drag your right foot, still connected to the earth. Okay, so here we go. Round dance time. Saskatchewan and some parts of uh, British Columbia. Now, um, uh, that, that's just uh, one of our styles of, of dances and uh, we also have uh, powwows too that, that happen throughout the summer. So in the summertime it's more powwow season and right now it's kind of just brown dance season and it, and it kind of just goes back and forth so there's a season for everything and uh, 
Um, our people tend to just follow the natural law. So the natural law just tells us, you know, it's winter time, hey, it's time to slow down a little bit and, and, and take care of some business by, you know, uh, we have these round dances sometimes to, in memorial to, to honor our past, uh, past family members that have passed on and, and such. And so that, that's why we do these dances and, and we come together in a good way and celebrate. And uh, powwows too. Who's ever been to a powwow before? Show of hands out there. All right, right on. Did you know that you have a powwow here in Winfield? All right, well, those of you that didn't put up your hands, by all means, go check out a powwow because that's an authentic Canadian experience that every Canadian should experience at least one time in their life because a powwow, what it is, it's a celebration of all nations to come together. Really, that's all it is. Every nation all across North America. So every nation all across North America, like Canada and the United States, have powwows. And we have powwows all year round. So right now it's kind of the states, like there's powwows happening in California right now. There's a powwow called Spotlight uh, Powwow or something like that, I can't remember all their names, but I went to one last year actually in San Diego, California, and I've had the opportunity to, to attend the world's biggest powwow known as the Gathering of Nations Powwow in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that powwow is huge, there's about 50, 60,000 people that attend that powwow every year. So it's really awesome to see and experience. So that's why I wrote this next song I'm going to share with you. This one's called uh, Powwow Trails, and it's kind of a combination of uh, two worlds, where powwow meets hip-hop. Get a little powwow soul clap from you like that. Yeah. I'm a soldier, that's a warrior. I'm so proud and strong, that's a glorious. It's a beauty of power, and we're making it hot now. On the day, living a lifestyle. With my new cheese, in the two piece. I'm in the big trees, and I'm working the cheese. Come on, and please, please. Yeah. I'm drinking the cheese, but I'm a friend of the world. I'm just going to put it. It's a big thing, and we're going to do it. It's a big thing, and we're going to do it. I'm on the big one, please. Come on, please. What's up, come on, you think that we have to celebrate a new moment with a big thing like a vacation? I guess we're in the shit, it's power out. It's back in the day, hey, we used to be a crime. Now we're back, so here is the chime of the real ringing and the drum beat for the P-O-W-W-Y. For the P-O-W-W-Y. P-O-W-W-Y. Alright, loud and proud. When I say pow, you say wow, pow. Thank you. That song was uh, originally from my, my first CD I ever put out. Uh, and I actually have five CDs uh, to, the, to date. And uh, I'm actually on iTunes too. And I'd actually like to leave my newest release here at your school. So would your advocate come up and accept this is Dallas Arcan, Thunderbird Spirit, 2014. Aboriginal People's Choice Music Award winner for Best Flute CD and currently nominated for Juno. Thank you. Now, thank you. All right. Now, one thing I thought I would share that uh, I don't know if you remember the, the lyric in my song, Power Trails, but uh, in my rhyme that I said about Power Trails, back in the day it used to be a crime. Well, it actually used to be illegal for us to practice powwows as indigenous people. 
I don't know if anybody knows that, but I thought I would share that, that at one time, it was legal for us to practice our ceremonies and our powwows, um, not even too long ago, maybe about 40, 50 years ago. And, uh, you know, it was quite unfair that indigenous people, unfortunately, lost a lot of their culture through the assimilation process that occurred in the residential school system. Now, today, I am living proof, we are living proof that our culture prevails no matter what. And we're still here. And we're still here with a smile. And we love y'all. Oh yeah. Because love always prevails, no matter what. So follow your heart. And I'm really proud to say that you know, I'm, I'm here today to, to share with you these, these uh, cultural dances and uh, songs and, and ideologies. Now, I'd like to introduce you to one of the oldest dances in North America, known as the Hoop Dance. Now, the Hoop Dance originally was a ceremonial dance that my ancestors did in ceremony. And the, the original Hoop Dance ceremony it was a ceremony utilized to help restore balance and harmony in the world. So that's why we have the hoop, is that perfect balance and harmony, because the circle it teaches us about that harmony, that continuous flow of energy throughout the universe. And the circle is very symbolic and important to our cultural way of life as indigenous people. Everything we do is always in a circle. When we have a powwow, we do it in a circle. The round dance we just did is in a circle. The drums that we sing and play on are in a circle. And even here in the Okanagan, the traditional dwellings of the Okanagan people are round. They're called the round house or the uh, pit house. And they were built into the earth. So, like I said before, everything that we do is, is very circular in our, in our culture. And that's just the natural law, because the earth is in a circle. The moon goes around the earth in a circle. The sun goes around the moon. I mean, the, the earth goes around the sun. Sorry, I got that confused. The, the earth goes around the sun in a circle. And all throughout nature, you can find the circle. So that's why we practice these dances and do what we do. Now, this particular hoop dance that I'm doing is uh, with 13 hoops. It's very different from the original style. The original style of hoop dance was only done with five hoops, and those five hoops would represent for the four directions, as well as the four types of life, and the one in the middle that sort of balances them all out together and brings them all together. So um, in this style of hoop dance that I've performed, I actually came up with this routine from a ceremony. When I was at a ceremony in, uh, in my homeland, uh, an elder came up to me while I was fasting, because fasting is also part of our ceremonies as well. Uh, while I was fasting, an elder came to me and I told him about the routine. I said, I'm making a new routine to honor the months of the year. Because in Cree, we have a, a name for every month. And with a name, it, it's associated with, with purpose because every month is, is a new purpose on earth. It's a new time. Like we just finished our harvest season right now. So all our stuff, all across the country, people have harvest their things. Yeah, whether it's a farmer or, or a gardener or anything like that, um, it, it's the harvest. The harvest is done. Now it's the winter. Now we just stay warm and, and, and we relax a little bit more because it's winter time. So that's the natural law, and the natural way of things. So uh, that, that's, the, that's the natural law that we follow as an indigenous people. Now, with this routine, this elder, he told me, add another hoop, add, add, it to, add one more to make it 13. And I was like, why would I do that? Because I wanted to do the months of the year. And he said to me, he reminded me, he's like, well, native people, indigenous people, we never had a linear calendar like we do have today. Like November, I don't know the date, something. 
27. Okay. See, there, I don't even follow the linear calendar today. <laughs> because our ancestors followed the moon cycle. So every new moon is a new beginning. So every 28 days, there's a new moon. So every year we have 13 of them. So that's why when I dance this routine, I acknowledge that, that, that natural law, that natural life process of the circle. So in the hoop dance, you use your imagination because it's also a storytelling dance that we use to tell our story about our connection with uh, the world around us, with the earth around us. So that's why you'll see different symbols that represent for the four types of life on Mother Earth, which are the ones that can swim, the ones that can fly, the ones that can crawl, and the ones that can walk upon Mother Earth. See, right here in the Okanagan, they believe in that same four concept, and that's the four food chiefs that you can see in the West Bank First Nation. They have murals there, and the first being Skim East, which is the bear which looks after everything on the land. And then we have the Titi, which is the salmon that looks after everything in the water. And then we have the, the Sia, which is the berries, everything that grows upon the land. And then last but not least, we have the, the, the Speedlum, which is the bitter root that grows underneath the ground. So together, all these elements all work together. Even though we're different indigenous cultures, we can relate on many, le many levels. Where I come from, we have the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel is also a representation of that four. We have those four sacred colors, the white, the red, the blue, and the yellow. And together, those colors can be found all throughout Mother Earth. They're the four sacred colors. Even if you look outside of Earth, even in our own solar system, you look in the outer space and you see the Milky Way, it goes in a circle. And in that circle, you find those four sacred colors. So it all ties in together. It's very circular. What goes around comes around. That's what the hoop dance teaches us. What we put out into the universe always comes back to us, whether it's good or bad. So without further ado, I present to you the hoop dance and the music I'll be dancing to is by the Mount, Mountain Soul Singers of the Small Boy Camp. And they're one of my favorite singers to dance to. So without further ado, here we go, Loop Dance. Okay. 